you know, it gets to that point. But one thing I keep telling every Christian is, do not let it take you away from God. Go vent in the presence of God. Go before him, tell him, this is not what you promise. This is not the way it is written in the Bible. The Bible says, God said in the scripture, say, remind me of my promises. So this is not the way it is written in the scripture. The Bible says, I shall be the head and not the tail. The word of God says, I will be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Your word says, one with you is with majority. Or one with you is majority, basically. Your word promised me that you perform all things for me. You said I will eat the best of the land, but this is not what is happening. So tell me, is it me or is there something? So let God lead you. Just be vulnerable before him. If your faith is not holding firm, say it. Lord, my faith is weak. By the way, the man in the gospel said it. He said, I believe, but please help my unbelief. It's okay. And God will provide us that help. Man, God, God is so good because today I, I read that scripture. Today I wrote that scripture, you know, in a prayer that I'm doing for some people. You know, I wrote this powerful prayer. And at the end, I, I wrote that, God, if there is any unbelief in me during this prayer, help me with my unbelief. Because sometimes God is a man that he wouldn't lie. And if he promised you an abundant life, if he promises you peace, if he promises promises us that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we even ask or think of, why is nothing moving? Why is nothing happening? What is it that is happening? It can't be him because he's a man that he doesn't lie. Maybe it's something that we're not doing. So you have to be able to go before God and be naked before him, be honest before him, be vulnerable for him. There was a moment, a season in my life where I went to God and I said, God, why am I not reading the word like I'm supposed to? What is happening? Is it my, what am I doing something wrong? Out of frustration because I, my spirit man wants this. I want to read the word. I want to be in, in tune with everything that God is saying. I know God speaks a lot through his word. I didn't just go there and pretend like nothing is not happening. You have to understand, people have to get to the understanding that God knows everything. There's nothing you can hide from him. So the fact that you want to go before him and kneel before him, and pray this vain prayer that don't make any sense, that he knows that that's not what you really want to say. You're wasting your time, and he's just waiting for you to actually say what is it you really want to say. And a lot yeah. of people don't understand that it's okay to be who you are. I mean, be, it's okay to be how you are and how you feel during prior, prior time. Be honest. There's moments where I go to God and I'm just honest. I pour my heart out to him, and I'm honest. I'm not sugarcoating it because I know he knows. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, God, you're lying. God is a man that is incapable of lying. So if something is not working out, there's something I don't know. There's something I'm not doing. So Lord, show it to me. Don't just leave me in the dark, but I'm admitting it to you. I'm confessing it to you. I'm letting you know that I need your assistance because the Bible tells us that, you know, those who conceal their sins, those who con that, that means conceal your struggles, conceal whatever you're going through will not find, will not prosper and will not, you know, obtain grace and mercy. But those who confess them and turn away from them, you know, you'll actually find mercy, you know. So I want to prosper. I want mercy. I want the grace of God to be upon my life. So I, I, I'm not afraid to go before God naked. I'm not afraid to go before God with the truth. I remember when I came to Christ and I was struggling with my gender dysphoria and I went before God. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I didn't, I was a new person to the faith you know I was a baby in the faith I didn't have any pastor I didn't have any church I didn't have anyone but all I knew was I'm not going to serve you God and struggle with this uh situation so I'm gonna I went to God I, I was so angry because it's like I felt like when you came to Christ everything was supposed to happen overnight and everything was supposed to be good <laughs> I didn't understand I didn't understand that it's a process it's a journey and when we go through some things, it's to help another person. So he documented my journey for others to see that it's okay. You, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process and it's okay to go through the process. As long as you seek me and you chase after me, you will be able to get what I promise you. You know, your healing and your restoration comes when you seek. 
your healing and restoration come when you knock and ask, you know, so I had to go through that moment. And then I had to realize that, listen, I'm not going to struggle, but I'm, I'm willing to struggle, but I'm just not going to struggle. I laid it before God, honestly, and instantly God said, you know what? I love that you, I love, you came, I'm, I'm meeting you where you were. I'm meeting you where you at. You came to me as if you don't understand that you should, you should approach me with reverence and honor. I know you're frustrated. I know you don't really know that. So I'm going to meet you here. But when you get to that place, don't you ever approach me like that? Don't you ever speak to me like that? And I'm like, I didn't know that. But at that moment, he says, all right, I meet you here. But here's what you need to do. Since you came to me, confess all this to me. I'm going to give you a solution. And when you when, I, when he gave me the solution, he told me that you need to go on this fast. And I went and fast, fast, fasting, fasting, fasting until, you know, I, the struggle I was that I was having was no longer there. But I listened to I, I was naked. I told him what I was going through. I confessed it to him and he made a way and I could have rejected the way and, and continue to you know, not prosper, not to continue to struggle. But I accepted what he said to me. I trusted what he said to me. And that's when I was able to prosper above the struggle that I was going through. So you have to tell it to God. You have to confess it. Don't conceal it. Don't pretend this is not playing church, but this is you having a relationship with your father, just like your earthly father. He wants you to be vulnerable. He wants you to be open and he wants you to pour your heart up to him wherever you are in your life. Absolutely. You said it very right, Ricardo. And you know, while you were talking, I was just trying to pull up my Bible um, from my laptop. And I just want to read from what Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter seven, verse 15, it says, and I read, I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And this is a journey of Paul trying to say that this is only what you said, you know, it's not spontaneous. It's not instant. It's a process. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and personal savior today. It does not mean that tomorrow you start acting right in every ramification. It's also a process. So you have to, sometimes you will fall. Bible says that the most righteous man on earth sins 70 times, seven times a day. That doesn't mean that we should continue to sin because grace abound. But what it simply means is that you are human and you will fall, you know. But the most important thing in this journey of recovery, in this journey of Christ, is that for as many times you fall, you rise up again. You know, we're not we're not trying to encourage people to go out and do what is what you know is wrong with the aim of saying that I'm gonna go back and tell God I did, I committed a sin, so please have mercy. That's not what we're saying here. We're just trying to say that in the process of that recovery, in the process of getting back to Christ after you've given your life to Christ, there are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of things you will encounter. The devil will come striking, it's not gonna take it easy. You don't expect to just pull out and pull out that way. The devil will definitely come. He's going to come in different dimension. He's going to come the first time trying to lure you back with the good things. Are you serious? Do you really want to give up all those things? Do you know what, what you're going to miss? Think about it again. And then you will want to start reconsidering if you're not careful. And the Holy Spirit will come back. And this is why it's important to study the scripture. Because the easiest and the most direct way to rebook Satan is to quote the scripture. It is written. Jesus Christ had that temptation after 40 days and 40 nights. And for the three levels of temptation he had, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. So it's important for you as a Christian to know the word of God so that you're able to address the devil whenever he comes to you. He understands the scripture and he cannot challenge it because he knows the authenticity of the scripture. So, yes, it will not happen spontaneous. It's a process. And that's the only way you can appreciate it. That's the only way you can appreciate it. So in the process, so many things will happen. But make sure you are rooted in the scripture. Make sure you are having a relationship with God with Jesus Christ, our source to God. It is very important because if you're not having a relationship, 
When those attack comes, you would derail completely. If you come to that and say, I give my life to God and tomorrow, you're not doing something to help you to begin to build a relationship. It's done. It's just like the, you know, the earthly relationship, the normal relationship we're here today. If you have a relationship, maybe you're married or maybe you're engaged or something, and you 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 tell somebody to somebody propose to you or somebody ask you to marry them, or you go to the altar and you might say I do to someone, and then the next day you just decide to continue to live as if you're single. Do you think your partner will come and be like, oh, all is well and good? No. There will always be a room of what is going on. The Spirit of God will always come back to you to say what is going on. And it takes you to still be in that relationship to even know that the Holy Spirit is talking to you. So we would experience the ups and down. He says, my yoke is easy, but there's temptation around it. Christianity is not a bed of roses. People keep saying it every now and then because temptation and trials are part of it. He said, the world hates me. So they will hate you too. You would experience all those things. But it's important that in all this, find a place to make sure you have a relationship. How do you have build a healthy relationship? If I go to a marriage counselor now and I'm asking them, well, how do I build a, a healthy relationship? I'm sure the first thing they will tell me is communication. <laughs> so if communication is a way to build a healthy relationship, then you got to communicate. And the only way to communicate is what we call prayers. You have to stay in tune. You have to wake up in the morning. The way you know those days when you're in a new relationship, in the morning you wake up, you just want to hear the person's voice. Hello, I'm still on the bed. I'm yawning. Uh, how was your night? That's what it should be. You're in a relationship with Christ. Wake up in the morning and say to you, hi, love. I'm just waking up. I'm still going to talk to you, but I just want to say hi. I'm awake. And then when your knees hit the ground, have that communication. Tell him what you want to do for the day. And above it all, ask him that it will be done. I think this is where most of us as Christians get it wrong. We feel that relationship with God is different from what we do with all our earthly partners. We feel like it's just all about saying, I'm a Christian. And I read something to this afternoon that was so funny. It's, it's, it's a um, signage on one of the church in USA. I can't remember the name of the church. But there was this thing written on it. It says, you cannot build your spiritual muscle by going to ch church once, by going to the church once in a week. You can build your relationship by just being occasional with your partner. You have to be in touch. If, if you're in a relationship, you can't go out without telling the person. You hear people telling, oh, she just wakes up in the morning, she goes anywhere she wants to go, she doesn't even tell me, she doesn't carry me along. And that is why people are breaking up. If you're in a relationship with God, you need to carry him along as much as he desires to carry you along. So it's important. We have to be intentional about it. It's not a miracle. It's a process. You have to be intentional about it. I tell people, I said, if you want to be a Christian, it's you don't wake up every day and you feel like talking to God. Some days you feel like just like the normal relationship. Okay, I prayed yesterday. I'm done. I don't want to do this today. But think about it again. And that's why I said earlier on, it's okay to kneel down and be like, I don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed. I need you to, I need to know that you're still with me. I need to know we're still in this together. I feel like I'm the only one walking now. And God will show you that he's there. Christ will show you. The Holy Spirit will prove it to you that you're not alone. I don't want to talk too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're speaking even to me. So glory be to God. And I was just allowing the spirit to flow because as much as I do these things, I do have questions some days, just like you're saying, you know, it's like, God, what's happening? What am I doing? Like, what's going on? You know, so these questions will come at you. It's not like I don't know that he's there. He's not there with me because the words, the word of God is always in my mind. I'm, I know that. But for me, I, I think I'm more of a, I want to, I, I love feeling the presence of God. He's always there. And it's not about a feeling thing. But this is just because my my relationship with him was in the beginning was so tangible. It's He wanted me to learn. It's not a feeling. It's a knowing. 
So even though I know it's annoying and not a feeling, I'm attached, I'm addicted to the feeling. So there's days I would go to him just like a child would, just because I want the feeling. It's not like I don't trust that he's there because he's a man who wouldn't lie, but I would, I want to feel that feeling. And it's like, what's happening, Holy Spirit? What's going on? What, where are you? I feel like I'm not, you're not doing this with me anymore. And it's, it's not like he's not doing it. He wants me to get to the full understanding of his word that tells me he will never leave nor forsake me. And even if I make my bed in hell, he will be there. So that's how, how much God is. There's nothing that can separate me or you from God. Not what the angel says, not what the devil do. Nothing is able to separate the love that God has for, for us. Not just for me and not for you, for all of us, even the sinner man. God has so much love for us. But when you experience him in such a tangible way, you might get, you know, you might get so much addicted to want to feel that feeling 24-7. So it's okay to go to him and ask him these questions, you know, because there's days when I'm getting up and, I, and I'm praying and I'm doing everything right. And I'm like, so why are you not responding? What am I doing wrong? What's going on? Not because before it was like that. So it leaves me feeling like I'm doing something wrong. And that's accusation from the enemy. So if you don't know the word, you're going to fall for that. And then when you fall for those lies, what's going to happen? You're going to want to start drifting away from God because how dare you, God? I'm doing everything. I love you. I'm by your side. I'm sticking by you. I'm doing everything. I'm turning away from the world. But you're ignoring me. But because that's not what God says, that's what your flesh wants to say based on what the enemy was, was speaking to you about not hearing God's voice. He's always speaking. He's always speaking just like right now. He's speaking through you to me and to others that might, that might be watching. So we all go through these situations. Even the pastor, man, don't let anybody fool you. Don't let anybody tr trick you. We're all human beings and we all go through the same kind of emotions because we're a being that is attached to physical things physical motions and pictures we want to feel see and you know to believe sometimes but god is spiritual and we're we're a spiritual being but we're in the physical you know so we have to we we we, we want to feel we want to feel it's, it's normal to want to feel this but you have to understand that knowing that god is with you will make a whole difference when your flesh wants to feel when you feel like you're alone and you just want to feel god calm your presence i want to feel it I want to cry to you and I want to feel it. And God is like, you know that I'm with you. You know I'm beside you. You know I'm not leaving you. You know I'm protecting you. You know all these things. So why are you even doing that? To some points where I'm, I feel convicted because it's like, I feel like now I'm playing games with God. It's like, I feel like now it's just like a kid. It's just like a kid <laughs> with his mom or his dad because he wants something and they will cry because... God put that in me, like, that's what you do if you don't realize. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm find another route because God convicted me and tell me that's what I'm doing. So I, I can't go back to him doing that because it just feels, I feel like when I pull my heart, heart out to him and cry, he comforts me in such a way, but he always does that. But it's just all about the feeling sometimes. And I just want to tell somebody it's okay to feel that way, but you have to understand the feeling part, but knowing part too. You feel this way, but you know that is with you. So you you will not fall for the lies. So I just want to tell you some tell somebody it's okay to feel the feelings and allow the emotions to come. But no matter what you feel, no matter what comes, always stick by his side, always stay at his feet, and always trust him. Just as just as um Ogo said before, to his feet. No matter what happens, you fall to his feet. Don't fall away from him. Fall always at his feet. Kneel on your knees. You might not have words to say. You might not know what to say today because you said everything yesterday. You said everything two weeks ago and you feel like God is still not doing anything. Don't lose hope. Don't give up on him. Don't, don't start doubting him, but continue to go at his knees and say, Lord, you know everything. I don't know what else to tell you. All I know, I love you and I'm just going to trust you. And, and this is what builds your confidence. This is what builds your relationship. This is what builds you. I feel like sometimes, I feel like God is, sometimes doing that intentionally for me to always come no matter what 
what circumstances I will always come. It's not like he's not there, but when he does that, where I don't feel like he's there, but I'm still coming, that will do something to us, that will do something to me. If I'm not hearing you and I feel like, hey, this don't make any sense, but yet still, no matter how much I feel that, I'm always coming. So that does something to me without me even understanding. Absolutely. No. So, we didn't we didn't enter a conference together and there's this there's there's just this one line that you said that stuck with me you know it stuck with me for such a long time that i'm able to remember it but i wasn't able to ask you to elaborate on it more because it was me speaking then so i want you to 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 explain to us you mentioned that you know sharing the gospel in in its not not in its not in its entirety it will do damage to people and I want you to elaborate a little bit on what does that mean to share the gospel in its entirety or not in, not in, not in its entirety? What does that mean? Okay, so um, I know we have that, um, it's more like a program um, and we had a different topic we were talking about, which is why we talked about it. But I'm just going to take that and relate it with the word of God what we're talking about today. Uh, this is end time. The Bible says that towards the end that men will be deceived. It says even the very elite. What that means in the scripture is that people who are sound in the scripture, people we look up to, people that we assume know it all, people perhaps who are called apostles, pastors, Ministers, popes, bishops, name it. But I've prayed for you. That's what Jesus said. Because our flesh cannot be equated with the power of Satan. It is what we carry in us that equates, that is way above the devil. <laughs> Today, there are so many ways people have preached the gospel. People have personalized it to suit themselves. There's so many varying versions of the scripture. And sometimes we take away from the word of God. You know, it's called good news. It has to be good. And it has to be a news. It's not a gospel of prosperity alone. I'm not saying prosperity is not part of it. And that's why I said it's not the gospel of prosperity alone. It's not the gospel of condemnation. If you do not repent, you will die. The emphasis is come and have life. The emphasis is come the way you are. The emphasis is come, Jesus loves you. Come, God loves you. So today we get different kind of version and that's why a lot of people tend to be defensive of the word of God. Because they feel like, okay, these are Christians. They're coming to preach. Now they're going to tell me tattoo is bad. And then they're already prepared for you. But that's not what the scripture says. Oh, it's just going to tell me now that the way I look is not godly. If I don't repent, I'll go to hell. That's not what the Bible says we should go and preach. We're going to preach the good news of God. Come to Jesus, the author and finisher of soul. Come for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. So it's important for us to encourage people to come the way they are and let the spirit of God do it for them. I don't think, I think where we get it wrong today is trying to call people to, re, to, to get cleansed before coming to Christ. That's not what it is. It's not the reverse. You know, come the way you are first and let the Holy Spirit do the cleansing. It's a process. But the coming is an instant. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes, I do. It's instant. The process of cleansing is a process. And it's not man. It's not me or you. It is the Holy Spirit that does that part. In a little wonder why Apostle Paul says, 
um, I guess Apollos, it says, I, um, I, I, I plant Apollos water or in that direction. It's a gradual thing. And that's why even we as Christians today, the finished work of God is when we get to, when we get that glory. Everything we do, even while we're in Christ is still a process. So it's important for us to make sure we're preaching the gospel the right way so that we don't even become, uh, the way we preach the gospel does not become something that would deprive others from wanting to know God. You know, some people have preached the gospel as though once you come to Christ, you're not going to suffer again. And then you hear people saying, um, I used to be a Christian before. Uh, I was just paying my tithe in the church. The pastors were getting richer and I was dying. Now I don't go to church again because I used to be a Christian before. They said, if I sow a seed, I'm going to do this. I used to be a Christian before. I went to the church and because I was, uh, maybe because I had a tattoo or because I was, whatever way you are, that is awkward to that church denomination. You know, everybody was looking at me as if I'm a sinner, you know, and nobody wanted to talk to me, so I had to stop going to church. That's not a package. I don't want to go too in-depth. You know, I keep telling people, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. What Jesus came to the earth to do is to build a relationship with us, with man. He didn't come to set up religion. The apostles were called Christians in Antioch for the first time. After Christ has come and done what he wants to do. And just a way of saying that this people behave like Christ. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. And that's why it's personal. Because it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. So our duty to going into the world to preach the gospel, the good news, is to just tell people, come to Jesus. Let them see why they need Jesus. And let them come the way they are. He said, come on to me, all you that are heavily laden. He didn't say, drop your load and come. Come the way you are. That's what Christ says. And I will give you rest. It's the one that will give you rest. And the way he does it with everyone differs. It varies. It varies. You don't see somebody that drinks and you're like, oh, you're drunk. Um, you need to stop drinking. You need to repent of your sin. That's not the news. There's no good in that news. You just need to come the way you are. Let the spirit of God do the conviction for you, for that person. And I had of a, a pastor that went preaching the other time. And while he was preaching to a guy who was smoking um, some funny stuff at the same time drinking, and he was really, really looking, you know, and the pastor kept preaching and the guy kept puffing the smoke into his eyes. And the, the pastor kept up preaching or the preacher, I don't know if he's a pastor, kept preaching to him. And each time he says something, he just deliberately puffed the smoke into his eyes. But he noticed that the guy was still talking to him. And he got to a point, he said, don't you notice I'm smoking? And then he looked at him and said, yeah, I know you're smoking. Don't you think it's a thing? He said, so do I have to stop smoking if I want to repent? He said, no, you don't have to stop smoking. I didn't say you should stop smoking. I'm only saying that Jesus is Christ, is the Redeemer. You need to know him. There is life after death. God loves you. So if I come to your church with a smoke, would you eat? Said, That's what God wants. God wants you to come the way you are. You don't come clean. If you're clean, then you don't need God. Have you ever seen somebody who is neat that goes to take a shower? You don't need to shower if you're already neat. You need to come and take the shower. And that was how that guy was able to convince this guy, person, other person to come to Christ. Let the Holy Spirit do his part. Our path is to spread the good news. The Holy Spirit does the conviction. The Holy Spirit does the transformation. The Holy Spirit will do the redemption part of it. We are just to spread the word. And in the process of spreading the word, signs and wonders will follow it. That's what Christ said to the apostles. 
and leave the rest for the Holy Spirit to do. So when I say the gospel in its entirety, it's, it's a package on its own. Do not take the part that suits you and run with it. Give it to the person. You know, I used to like um, Pastor Ray Comfort of Living Waters. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, okay. Awesome. I love his pattern of doing the Ten Commandment check just to make you understand that you need God, but he has never condemned you for it. You know, you need God. Have you ever done this every day? You need God. You need Christ in your life. You need to be accepted. And then you accept Christ and then you come to him and then the spirit of God will take over from that. The Holy Spirit will take over. He will do the redemption. You know, I was listening to somebody this afternoon while I was browsing my phone. This young man had a lot of tattoo on his face. I think he's a popular person, uh, maybe in the music industry, but I don't know his name. Unfortunately, I didn't even take note of his name. He it, had heavy... I think it's John, John Gabbana with some locks, I think. Uh, okay, again, I didn't take note of his name, so I wouldn't be able to come. But he had heavy tattoos on his face, but it's not a Christian, though. And so when he was talking, he said something. He said, I think somebody approached him and asked him to remove those tattoos. Since you're not a Christian, so get rid of the tattoos. Go for laser cleansing or whatever. And he looked at the person and said, the Holy Spirit has not convicted, convinced me to do that. So listen, my friend, there are places you will go to with your skin very clean. You can go into the hood. They won't even accept you. Not to talk of preaching the word of God in the hood. But the way I look, if I walk into the wood, they'll think it's their own person. And when I talk to them, it will make more sense. Amen. So sometimes just let people be the way they are. Let God carry it because we all have different roles, different things God wants us to use us for. Amen. He may allow you to go through all that so that when he pulls you out and you're talking to somebody, the person doesn't need to ask you, do you know what I've gone through? Amen. They can see it in you that you've gone through so much. And they'll just like, man, from the look, from the way you look, I know that you were once like me. Like us. So how did you go about this? So that's the gospel in its entirety. Do spread the news and let the spirit do the conviction. But we just have to spread the news because the world is moving very fast. We can't afford to keep quiet. We need to tell the story of Jesus. We need to talk about his, the story of salvation. We need to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ and let the Holy Spirit do the conviction and the process part. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. That is such a powerful word. And I hope that somebody who might be taking the wrong approach and you know, ministering to others out there who don't know Christ, will you know be inspired or will be convicted or will get a revelation whatever the case may be from what um you just said because for me i didn't know the, the good news i just knew the bad news people preach <laughs> not the good news nobody to told me that jesus is a, a god that saves redeems and loves you the way you are and he'll meet you wherever you are in your life you're not too far gone Everybody told me that I need to fix myself, which is I was impossible. It was impossible for me to do it. I couldn't. I tried when I was a kid. I didn't fix it. It couldn't fix. I could not fix my own situation. But nobody told me that just come the way you are. If you come the way you are and you trust in God, everything else will be fine. So I, I want somebody to understand today, come to God the way you are. You don't have to fix yourself because you will not be able to. You will chase after trying to get your life together, but you will never get your life together unless you get to the gospel, the good news. Jesus Christ is all of it. The good news, the gospel, that is, that is who he is. He wants you to come the way you are, but when you do, just be reminded that you cannot remain the same. There is a transformation that will happen in you, but when you experience his love, his peace and his joy and this constant love that he gives to you, you will want to change. You will want to be better. You will want to do what he has commanded you to do because you, you will not understand why he tells you to be the way you're supposed to be because it protects you. All right. So the good news is Jesus died for you. You know, we were all, we are all born into this world by default as sinners because the, of the disobedience of, you know, our 
parents, Adam and Eve, you know, they disobeyed God and sin came into the world. So we, it's our nature to want to sin. The flesh, we are born with the fruits of the flesh. And, and, and God, when you accept Jesus, he gives you now the fruits of the spirit, which is life and life in abundance. The spirit of the flesh, the fruits of the flesh is dead. He doesn't want us to, you know, die at the end of our lives. So he wants us to live in abundance. And that's why when you choose him, he's not going to condemn you. He's not going to rush you. He's not going to force you. He's going to take his time with you. He's going to meet you where you are. He's going to take his time with you and redeem and restore you because he can do all things, not some things, all things through Christ who strengthens you. So I just want to encourage somebody. We want to encourage somebody who might be being might be afraid of coming to Christ because you feel like you need to fix yourself first. You feel like you need to get rid of that tattoo first. You don't have the money to do it. You feel like you need to stop stripping first because you need to provide for yourself. Whatever your situation is, it's okay to come to him right now the way you are. He's there to receive you with open arms. And don't be afraid of letting go of the things that you do in your life to provide your, provide for yourself or your family because he's the ultimate provider. And when you accept him, there are certain things that he promises you that will automatically come to you if you just trust him. So I'm here to encourage you and pour into you. Give Jesus the try that you've never given before. Give him a try in your life. You've never, you've heard Christian tell you about God. You're hearing me speaking now. You've never experienced it. You might think what we're saying is all superficial and it's not real, but how could you tell that when you've never experienced it for yourself? I can tell you about Christ. I can tell you about the experience because I've lived where you are and I'm now living in him. So we are experiencing our experience with Christ. You have not yet to live it. So you cannot dictate whether it's true or not. But if you try it for yourself, you have all right to either leave and say this, this doesn't make sense or whatever the case is. But until then, you have no right to tell any Christian who has experienced God's love, deliverance and healing that he's not true. And this is all fake and all superficial and God's not real. You have no right to do that because you've never experienced it. So you're deceiving yourself. So I just want to invite you to try Jesus for yourself. So if there's anything else you would like to, to say before we wrap this up, is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers or what would you like the viewers to know about you or about Christ before we wrap this up? Yeah, so this is what I want to end this uh, for me. It's I want to say to everyone, every Christian, both young and new, be intentional about your relationship with Christ. Be very intentional. Have a routine. God is a God of routine. Do not wake up and pray when you feel like you want to wake up and pray. Do not procrastinate what involves your relationship in God. Have a routine when you pray in the morning. Have a routine when you study the scripture. Have a routine of how you pray at night. Be intentional. Be consistent. Christianity is not seasonal. It is a relationship. And you are the one to drive that relationship in accordance with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God will help us. It will lead us through until the end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that's it for this week's, guys. That's it for this week's show. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Uh, Ogo, I'm so, I'm so honored to have you here. And it's just a blessing that you came on to you know bless the people with whatever God has you know revealed to you and has placed into you and your experience with God you have you have dropped so much gems so much things that I'm even blessed by so I'm sure that the viewers too will be blessed so I just want to thank you again for coming on and I do thank God for your life and thank you so much for you know inviting me before and I'm just so honored and privileged for that too and um, um, I'm just so grateful so don't forget, guys, next week, same place, same time. God bless. So, yes, yeah, so um, this was um, really awesome, and I'm just so